This is the full review of the Ford Focus Estate or Tonier as we say in Germany for the estate version. We'll have it here as the ST line and we'll take you on a tour on the exterior, the interior and the driving experience here on Autogefühl, your number one resource for in-depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars with Thomas. Let's go! It will be very exciting, I can promise. In full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go! In the front hatch and estate are the very same. They have the sportier styling also in the base versions with this fish mall grille and those more horizontally drawn lamps here with the LED daytime running light signature. The ST line which we have here today has some stronger bumpers in the lower part for that sportier look. It also comes with some stiffer suspension setup. So it's not only the visuals. And this color here today is called race red, a rather bright red color for sure is attracting a lot of attention. Do you like it? So while the hatch has grown two centimeters, the estate version in the new generation has grown 10 centimeters now at 4 meters 66 or 15 foot 3. And considering it's still a compact size car, it's actually quite large. So it's a little bit like the Škoda Octavia, which is going from the compact segment a little bit in the niche between compact and mid-size segment. As for the design, this is the Steeline again with the badge, 16 inch rims. Yes, they look a little bit small because they are also equipped with those winter tires. Then there is a black frame around the windows, but it's just this, um, you know, plain rubber. So um, also with the gaps you can find here. This is not the highest build quality as you can see in those of the details. But of course, this car is always about the driving. We'll soon see more about that. The door handles are actually quite thick. Design line more in a round shape right there. And then the estate, the big difference is of course, the rear part where the hatch is already ending right there. And also form a shoulder part right there. Going over to the tail lamps, which are already beginning quite early at the side profile. In the rear, those tail lamps are more three-dimensional now in the new generation. Comparison estate and the hatch. Of course, the estate is a little bit wider, especially in the top part, but overall, it's still a hatch design with a rather upright look. Big focus letters here now to make it also appear a little bit more special. And they say they have an honest design, for example, not using any fake exhaust. Those are also two real exhaust tips, also with a polish around. They look quite fancy already, although the engine is not that big. And let me show you some more colors. This one here is a metallic gray. It's also a hatch version. So we got some hatch cars here, but of course you can get the colors for hatch and the estate. This one here also a metallic blue, a little bit darker. Then we had the race red with the estate car we have. This one here, the metallic red, more in a wine red. Then a silver. Also pick your favorite color and tell me in the comments. There are of course some more other colors available. This one again is double and this again the a uh, little bit darker blue and my favorite Thomas bright blue color for today with this ST line hatch. I would definitely go with this color, would you also? This is the car key, simple and light. Now join me here on the interior. By the way, keyless entry, put your hand right there. 
car closes, also the mirror folds in, put your hand on the inside, then the mirror folds out. Blind spot monitor is activated by the way here also when you have the um, just a small flashing light. Then door sound. Hmm. Hmm. The side mirror makes a sound when closing the doors. Hmm, that's not too good. Then inside here, soft materials also at the top part of the door. Then it's the ST line with this carbon fiber look. It's not carbon fiber, of course. Window levers all automatic. Then some room also for bigger bolts at the inside of the doors. Bang and Olaf and sound system is actually quite decent. Then the ST line has this special entry batch, but it's just you know just a foil. Then features a sporty steering wheel, red contour stitches on the inside, flat bottom. That's a very good grab handle. Then inside of the seats is fabric. Outside, I'm not sure it should be leather red, I guess, but those are the ST line seats. Also with some more shoulder support and again some red contrasts. Electric support as well. And let's get inside. It's quite easy here with the focus. So and wow, it's really spacious here. It almost feels like you are already in the mid-size segment, so one segment above that. And yeah, it's actually a good, quiet and comfortable situation here. You have more room than in the previous generation. That has changed. In the front, hatch and estate are basically totally the same. Oh, there's a small cubby hole here. Even dampened a little bit. Steering wheel can be adjusted manually. And I'm 1 minute 86 or 6 foot 1 and that leaves me still plenty of headroom in the front. There's also a panoramic roof available that will reduce the headroom a little bit. But as a tall person in the front, no problem here. And those seats here are all electric support to control everything. You can also put them a little bit higher if you like. So overall, so far, quite satisfying here what we can find as for the seating position. Now let's take a close look at the cockpit elements. Interior overview, first of all the whole perspective. It's more cleaned up than in the previous generation because more has gone into that um, new touch screen. The top part of the dashboard is soft touch. So that's quite good. Then you have this carbon fiber style decor elements for the ST line. Also the materials below that is soft touch. But the overall impression is somehow that this car could still already be like five, six years old. So this is, I think, not where the strength of this car is. There's still like a separate climate unit in the lower part. It has this rubber surrounding here that feels also quite cheap. So this is somehow kept basic but simple. But has also the advantage you can access everything quite easily. Also the seat heating, the uh, front heated windscreen. Um, also the heated steering wheel, so you have those options. Really cool to have them for sure. The steering wheel is very nicely done, very thick grip, rally style I would say, um, that you can have a good handling. Also with some ACC controls on the left side and this one is the optional 8-inch screen, the top one that is available with the Ford Think 3. So if we take a closer look at that, you can zoom in and out on the map, just with pinch and zoom. It serves all basic functions. Sadly, you cannot zoom in and out with the tune knob there. That's not possible. And if you want to change to the main menu, you go like this. You can connect your phone with Bluetooth or also with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And the only bad thing is that if you use, for example, CarPlay and then switch to the car set nav, that does not work. Then it just takes the set nav from your Apple CarPlay. Overall, the system is quite okay, but I think they should um, increase the integration that you can still use the, 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 the car set, uh, set nav. That is really important. Yeah, that's about the infotainment system on the right side. On the left side, if we move over to the instruments, they're kept rather analog and basic. Just a small digital screen in the middle for the digital speed, for example, or the driver assistance systems if you want to check the um, ACC, for example. It is very well to read, so it also does the job. And above that, there's now a head-up display. If I start the engine, you will see that it folds up this separate layer and then you have for example the current speed in that and also the um, some assistance system information 
I mean, you have the separate glass layer, but it still helps somehow not to distract your view too much to the lower part. In the front lower part, you can have this USB slot for the smartphone connection. Next to that is also an inductive charger for your smartphone. It makes sense if you connect it with the via Bluetooth. If you use the cable for the CarPlay or Android Auto, then you use the cable anyway to recharge and connect at the same time in a 12 volt power supply. Then the shifting lever, manual six-speed gearbox we have here today. And around there are some more keys, for example, for picking the driving modes. We'll soon talk more about that when we drive the car. There's also an electric handbrake and then some more storage room. Here, for example, you can slide it open and close it. And adaptive somewhat for the cup holder, so you can change the size of your bottles. And then there's this armrest. This one again a little bit loose from the build quality, but there's decent room on the lower part. And yeah, I mean, again, those parts here are not that attractive, but then again, if you think about that, the price is really attractive you get here in this car. Before I get in the rear, let me first show you this option here with those door protectors. They are for the front and the rear door, so for all four doors, they flip in and out automatically. It's a manual system and very interesting. Nice to have them, they protect your doors for sure. Then let's see how much room we have here. So the rear door doesn't open that wide. What is cool that you also have soft material at the rear doors. We hardly find that nowadays. So indeed, not well, there's light and shadow in this interior for sure. Then you also have the same styling as for the ST line for the rear seats. They look also single seat alike. So with some side support also for the rear passengers. Of course, here with the estate, you'll have more room, especially headroom than in the hatch, but we'll find out more about that right now. So I'll get inside. Shoe tap. <laughs> well, as for the leg room, you see it does fit even if I am driving as a tall passenger. However, you see it would be better when the front seat would be lifted a little bit higher, then it would also be easier with the gaps here at my knees. Here, if you take a look in front of my knees in close up, this is just a little little difference if you compare the hatch to the estate so um, equal almost equal legroom a little bit positive more a little bit more here for the estate also with the headroom this is no problem here at all this would still also work for me even if the panoramic roof would be built in here it's actually a quite good seating position here mm, but you know you see the difference here in the height so the rear bench is rather high than the front seat is rather low this is Better for children, for example, for child seats. But you see, even as tall drivers, you get along here very, very well. Isofix at the outside part of the seats, and you can also flip the bench from here in a two-third, one-third split. You cannot vary the angle. And then here in the middle part, there are some armors with cup holders. They are also adaptive, and you have a ski hatch right there. You can load things just through the middle. Of course, the more exciting part will now be the trunk. So you can open the trunk in a normal way, but also here with the foot kick opening mechanism. Here we go. <laughs> so, and yeah, I mean, that worked quite well. I just had to be a little bit faster. This top part here is a little bit loose, doesn't have any side rails right there. And then, wow, this is really enormous. 600 liter to maximum about 1,650 liters. That's 140 liters more than the predecessor. And just from dimensions here, this is one meters in length. It's about 115 meters in width here next to the wheel arches. And the height just to the cover is about, just to the cover here is just below 50 centimeters. And to the very top part, it's uh, yeah it's about 70 centimeters let me also show you how that works when i put some luggage in but before that just here under the cover this is basically to make it even and then there's another cover with the replacement tire and the bno sound system equipment on the inside so and now first of all some cabin trawl in there they can see how large this trunk is and this is really among the best in the segment again 
alongside with the Škoda Octavia. Really so much you can fit in here and this has dimensions of a segment above. Then you can also flip the seats. Also with the other side works the very same way, like this. And then to the driver's seat, let's see. When I would, you know, when I just would be driving, this is then 180 in meters. And we can put the co-driver seat also all the way in the front. And let's see how that one plays out then. It has this turning knob, so I cannot flip it all the way to the front. I just do it like this now. This would then be the maximum setup as for the length. So to the front seat, and this is then over two, yeah, just over two, yeah, like a two meters in the hand. And to the middle part, it's then of course more than two meters if you, for example, also use the ski hatch like, like there to the, almost to the shifting lever, that would be like this. So two meters plus, yeah, almost 40, so two meters 35 or something. So a lot you can do with this vehicle for sure. And indeed, that's one of the best in the segment as for this respect. And now I am sitting in the hatch version just to show you the difference. So legroom wise, the difference is not that huge. It's a little bit, um, but you see that the main difference they've put in the length of the vehicle is more really went to the trunk. So here, again, you can see I can still sit also in the hatch with four tall adults. That's possible. Also headroom-wise, although it's also a little bit, um, you know, a little bit less than in the estate. But you can really say little difference than hatch and estate here in the rear seating, but a very, very big difference than just behind us. And comparison of the length for the hatch. So we had in the estate one meters in length just when the seats were up in here is seven yeah 77 so less than 80 centimeters so the difference in length is right that's this year so 20 yeah about this 20 centimeters difference in length so that's where the estate is especially longer in the trunk there are no hydraulic struts for this front hood however there are three cylinders for the petrol engines and they are all turbo this one is the 1.5 with 182 horsepower, around eight seconds to 100 kilometers or 62 miles an hour. The same engine is also available with 150 horsepower or the very small one liter petrol with 125, 100 or 85 horsepower, as well as four cylinder diesels at 1.5 with 95 or 120 horsepower or a two liter diesel with 150 horsepower, which would then have equal acceleration figures than the one we see here today. So rather small downsized engines, they are still okay as for the performance. How will they score in the consumption figure? We will also soon find out more about that. Welcome to Thomas's driving lounge with the Ford Focus Estate. Here with the 1.5 liter EcoBoost, so the turbo petrol engine, 182 horsepower. So the top petrol engine you can get so far. I mean, at some point there will surely be also a ST version for that one. So we also have the manual gearbox, six speed, and this is the ST line. So we'll also have the stiffer suspension setup. We'll soon tell you more about that. We do have 16 inch rims, however, so not the biggest rim type. I also said for the winter tires, that makes the ride, of course, a little bit softer comparing to when we use very, very big rims. And, you know, sometimes those test vehicles are equipped with basically two large rims and they make the ride a little bit stiffer than you would normally have that. And there's a general trend towards bigger rims, but of course, they're not only having advantages the only advantage is quite often just the looks and the smaller rim size usually give you a little bit more comfort. So as we've driven the hatch already before and there was also the stiffer suspension, we felt that in this case there it was indeed a little bit too stiff. So I'm really looking forward now if this is different when you drive with some smaller rims. And my first impression is Indeed, it's a little bit softer when you have those smaller rims 
because you just have more tire left to even something out on the road. The road here is so far very good and we're driving at slower speed. We'll soon also get to a little bit higher speed and also to some worse roads and then see you know, how that behaves in this case. And of course we want to see what about this sporty approach of the vehicle because something Ford is really famous for is the driving dynamics and you can see that here already the car handles quite well. Although it's almost 30 centimeters longer than the hatch here at the estate. So yes, you do feel a difference that you have some longer tail <laughs> swiping around. So definitely the hatch is the sportier choice. That's no wonder. We know with some mid-size cars especially, usually they have the same length and uh, same wheelbase and stuff. But here in the compact segment, it's quite often that the estate is indeed really longer than the hatch version and that's the case here so this car almost feels like a mid-size vehicle already it is one of the biggest here also as for the trunk capacity as we experienced earlier so indeed also driving wise it gives you a very calm feeling very confident ride and that doesn't feel that compact segment ish anymore so it's really more towards the mid-size segment so also driving wise, I feel that this one here in the Škoda Octavia estate, they come quite close because they try to move up in the segment a little bit. Police control, not for us. We don't do anything wrong. <laughs> that was allowed, this acceleration, so. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, the acceleration is actually quite good, especially if you give it in the lower gears, since we have the turbo, but you do feel it's rather a small engine. So I would wish some more displacement indeed, considering the size of the vehicle, because you always have to push the car quite a lot that something happens. But then it's actually quite okay. And the gearbox, by the way, is fantastic, manual gearbox here, so it's, smooth and crisp at the same time so you don't feel big resistance but it gives you some haptical feedback that you feel oh that's the gear I've just hit it now that's the right gear a very pleasant experience satisfying experience here to put in each gear what a nice route here we have then had it's also a very good testing ground here so indeed again I just want to go on that route there. That looked so amazing. So let's go left here. Again, shift the gear back. Second gear, well put in. Yeah, the, the hatch is a little bit more balanced. Um, you feel that there's the, wow, fresh tarmac here as well. So indeed, the car is not the super sporty one, considering, you know, engine and, well, it's a steel line with a stiffer suspension, but again, it's not a super special sports version, so, um, but considering it's not, it feels so much fun to drive. And I think that's what Ford is really managing very well. They also give this fun drive experience to their normal vehicles. That's, I think, one of the main strengths they had. So, as we've seen earlier, you can get very nice exteriors here now, especially with new Focus. The interior is somewhat the weakness because it looks already dated and um, you know really doesn't have the best build quality if you compare it to some of the competitors. But the driving is where they even it out again. So um, the driving is really very cool. Mm, what could have they done better? Well, the steering is very easy and light to steer and. Sometimes I feel it's a little bit too artificial. So um, there's hardly any resistance in the steering wheel. So it always feels like you would be steering in the air. Like here, for example, it doesn't give me a good contact to the road. So um, I think they could have found a little bit better setup as for this case. Suspension wise, you feel that's the ST line setup when you're going over some uneven bumps or something but it's still somewhat okay. Mm, I think I cannot recommend it together with very big rims. Then it gets too stiff, but if you don't pick the biggest rim, 
then I think you can you can very well pick that still for, for the sporty ride. But again, since we had it in the hatch when the combination with bigger rims, you can also scroll back to this review then later on. There I really felt it was too stiff for everyday driving life, unless you really intend to have that. And here, we, since we always take the perspective of a real customer and an everyday driver of a vehicle, we rather recommend the more comfortable choices, unless you really say you want that very stiff setup, but then you also um, you basically know what you get. So let's see, drive modes. There's normal. There's eco that reduces the throttle input just a little bit to save some fuel. And there's the sport mode that is increasing the throttle input. And let's see also if the steering somehow changes. So now in sport mode. Let me go back to the normal mode again. Yeah. I think the steering is lighter in the normal mode indeed. So here in the sport mode now. Yeah, I get a little bit more resistance. So I think the sport mode is more pleasing to me as for the steering setup then. It just feels a little bit more natural. So it's good to have, to have the choice. And if you have the manual gearbox, those driving modes never change too much. So if you have an adaptive suspension, they change the suspension. And if you have the automatic gearbox, they can change when, the, when it's shifting up, when it's shifting down and so on. But here, when you have the manual gearbox, you control your own shifting anyway. So then those drive modes don't change too much. But here, the biggest change is indeed the steering. And so I can indeed recommend you to keep it in the sport mode, have a little bit more resistance in the steering, and that's quite fine then. So again, very pleasant ride, even, you know, no matter if we go faster or a little bit slower. This is also one of the cars where I can say you can easily save the money and keep it with a manual gearbox because it's so well uh, thought out how they did it with the setup. And so manual gearbox, gearbox is really something they can do very, very well. As I said earlier, there's also this new automatic gearbox available now for some of the engines with this turning, um, turning knob would be really interested to test that one also at the later stage for sure. The speed arm, by the way, keeping track of in the head-up display. Yes, as we told you earlier, it's not a true head-up display which is projecting into the screen. You have the separate plastic glass layer, but it's still better than you would just look down at the normal instruments. So it's also definitely nice to have that. The ST line, by the way, also adds this sportier steering wheel, and this is quite good as for the grab handle. So you are very well in control of the car for sure. Since this one here, the ST is also a little bit longer, oh cat. Yeah. That was the right decision not to cross the road here. Very dangerous, so always watch out for cats crashing crossing the road. Somehow we can also test the brakes, I hope. So um, yes, the estate does feel less sportier than the hatch, that's for sure. But then again, it also gives you some more confidence just when driving straight. So for the motorway, that might even feel a little bit better. Overall, by the way, since we have this straight ending, I can very well see where the car does end and you know, the cars behind me, very well to see. To the side, it's actually also quite okay. Hmm since the rear windows can also be basically seen from here. It's also not too bad with the B-pillar. So there's a good overview still in the vehicle. So it gives you a, an easy ride with a good overview. It's, you don't have to learn this vehicle. It's a rather simple vehicle to get in and just to start driving. I think that's also something what Ford has been focusing on that you don't have to learn the vehicles pretty much. You know, the infotainment system has become, of course, a little bit more complicated you know, with new technologies and stuff, but still this Ford Sync 3 system is also quite easy to use, as we shown you earlier. Now again, take some more uphill. I mean, it's topography-wise up and down, of course, not too good for the consumption, but I haven't, you know, haven't 
exaggerated it so so much so and now consumption wise we are at 7.5 liters on 100 kilometers and i think considering we also had some acceleration here and there that's i think quite okay so we had it quite often also that the ford engines were consuming too much fuel uh, you know this downsizing doesn't always have the fuel consuming effect you could still get the power from those smaller turbo engines but often not the best consumption because they're just low consuming on paper but not in reality but again considering the size of the vehicle i think 7.5 liters that's still decent now uphill again the noise insulation is also good this is also something they have massively improved from the old to the new ford focus generation so i don't have to raise my voice that much pleasant ride it also um, comes definitely close to more expensive vehicles as i said earlier this interior setup here you know and the materials how they look like and feel this doesn't come close to to the segment above that or to premium manufacturers or something but the driving feeling and also the noise insulation can easily keep up with that and i think that's something something very positive to point out and you have to remind yourself this car is already quite well specced but it was it's still you know the total car overall is about 31 32 thousand euros and if you then think about what other cars are you getting for this price performance deal there's hardly anything other left you know 20k in germany it would be the the entry price and you know some cars and then double the entry price or something easily uh, and you know a volkswagen golf for example you can easily also get to 40k or something but here i think they they found a quite good mix to keep up a good price performance ratio so overall again what we expected from a ford car always convincing in the drive in the suspension and you already get the sporty driving fun although you don't have a super sports version so quite cool performance here in the driving part or what do you think And now our conclusion for today with the Ford Focus Estate in this new generation. Well, exterior-wise, I think they have a dynamic setup here for sure. Yes, I usually say go for smaller rims, but those ones are visually probably it needs too small. So maybe like 17, 18 inch, 17 inch should be a very good compromise, I think. But overall, I think they've done a good job with the design. Surely not a revolution if you compare it to the previous generation, more an evolution. On the interior, it's more cleaned up now and you definitely have a lot of room on the inside that's the biggest advantage especially here of the estate version however some of the parts are you know feeling rather a little bit cheap there's more room to improve that for sure so the interior is not the biggest strength as for the you know premium feel it does not get but then again you have so much room left especially in the trunk that's the biggest strength of this vehicle here in this version and then the driving Ford is usually quite good at that and that's the same case here again it has a very positive and sporty driving feeling the ST line with the suspension and the smaller rims is actually also a quite good ride just pay attention you don't have the combination of ST line and two big rims then it might get a little bit rough as for the suspension but you can also go with a base suspension always for sure shifting is also quite cool steering could be a little bit harder but that could be made with the uh, shifting to the sport mode but overall it gives you a very sporty and fun driving experience and the overall package considering the price of this vehicle is really very good so that's i think the biggest strength of this vehicle overall to have the very good price performance ratio what do you think please leave me your comments and also tune in to our hatch review of the all-new Ford Focus. Thank you so much for tuning in.